Hello and namaste, my beautiful friends. I'm Jill Loftus of Newit Astrology. Welcome to your planetary energy forecast for the week of August the 5th, 2024. So the month of August is off to a, uh, a big start. Now keep in mind, you want to gain traction as much as you can these first couple weeks of the month because once we begin to get a difficult angle between Jupiter in the sign of Gemini and Saturn in the sign of Pisces, well, that could, um, that could cause some long-term issues, some long wave difficulties. So we'll want to gain traction as much as we can at the beginning of the month. Now, as we start this week off, um, Mercury is going to station on the 5th at 4 degrees in the sign of Virgo. Remember, it went into the shadow last month on the 16th. So now it pauses in the sky and appears to move backwards. Now, of course, planets do not move backwards, but it is going to retrace so that you can rethink, redo, re-examine something in the range of 21 Leo to 4 Virgo. Now, of course, Mercury is very strong in Virgo, very empowered. So get your Virgo vision on, uh, but don't be overly critical or harsh, particularly with yourself. It's one of the deep shadows of Virgo. Now, we've got this week quite a few moon voids to pay attention to, so you might want to jot these down and convert them for your time zone. Always remember, I keep a full moon void list on a blog on my website every month so that you can check it because it's not a good time to, for example, sign a contract, make a major commitment, but it's a wonderful time for uh, inspiration, for artistic work, or for meditation. So on Monday, uh, the moon is void from 11 16 a.m until 5 17 p.m so take note of that now on the sixth mercury as it backs up begins to touch venus in virgo now remember venus she's not at her best in virgo right um, but this could be a, a moment of understanding of really seeing something clearly watch and avoid the shadow of Mer or uh, the shadow of virgo as i mentioned and also martyrdom i think feel like martyrdom is another major shadow of virgo energy so you know people are going to want to want to, to hear the facts they're going to want to know exactly how something's going to work and they're going to be very uh invested in the in doing things their way all right so um keep that in mind as you move through the week now we have a lovely connection on the seventh between sun and leo sextile lovely connection to jupiter and gemini so i am loving this especially for leos that's your the sun is your star right so absolutely leo sun leo moon leo rising take advantage of this wonderful jupiter connection so there could be a, a great idea a wonderful conversation a connection with somebody that who's going to really help you out but again watch the shadow of leo of needing too much attention um or attention for the wrong reasons now, Mars is starting to get very close to Jupiter as well. And so this is going to give us more of an urge to communicate, more of an urge to express ourselves, more of an urge to gain information. And remember, Jupiter is not at its best in Gemini because it gets caught up in the minutia. It gets caught up in the, the flow of too many ideas or too many possibilities instead of uh, being in its favorite spot across the sky, which is Sagittarius. So don't let your world get too narrow don't be too narrow-minded. Don't get overwhelmed by the influx of information. All right, now um, we've got, let's see, on the 9th, a super long moon void. That is 5.54 p.m. until 6.34 p.m. on the 10th. And so pretty much all of, especially in the East Coast, all day on the 10th, the moon is going to be void. All right, so take note of that. Now Uranus will get to 27 degrees. That's the furthest it's gotten in Taurus on the 10th. And when it does, it's gonna to begin to connect beautifully with Pluto. Now, this is still wide, but it's it gets within the three degree engagement range. And so this is going to really help us to see how some of these advancements in technology, some of these, um, this group energy of people wanting to break free of certain limitations, how that is going to help usher us into the future. There's a, a, a little bit of a magic triangle um, being formed between the outer three planets here. And this is our first uh, glimpse at that connection. Now, um, I, I, I hope <laughs> that this magic connection between these outer planets is, is, will help to ease us into the future. 
but outer planet energy absolutely uh, tears things up that aren't working. And so you might want to note the symbols around what occurs at the end of the week as far as the transformation of us on a global scale as, as far as humanity. Now, um, I'm also looking at the 11th because Saturn, moving backwards, right? Saturn is retrograde, begins to pick up a square to Jupiter. Now, this is going to be in play through the end of the month. This is a long wave energy, all right, due to the retrograde dance. This is going to be uh, uh, something that we have to manage for a while. So look at where is Gemini in your chart? Where is Pisces in your chart? And these are both energies that are mutable, adaptable, shiftable, changeable. Is shiftable a word? It is now. <laughs> But this is, can be very destabilizing. And I also would say, you know, the pandemic was started by the last Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. This square is going to bring back up themes related to the pandemic and some of the issues that came up then. So um, you might really want to pay attention as we get to the end of the week to some of those themes that might be arising in your life and in the world at large. All right. So for this week, well, there's lots of positive, beautiful things to kind of flow with. I'm really loving um, for the uh, high vibrational things, the sun and Leo sextile to Jupiter. You know, just don't take on too much. There can be with the Jupiterian energy. You're like, yeah, there's 75 ideas. I'm going to do them all right. No, <laughs> but um, it might be some lovely optimism. And I'm still, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of liking this Mercury Venus connection. I think that um, the more we can get clear on what we love and what we value and really have those conversations with the people that we love, the, the, the better off we are, right? It, it really is about um, interacting with others. And then of course, um, I'm, also, uh, I'm also taking a look at that um, trying of Uranus to Pluto, right? Transformation. Uh, unbelievable things will be happening. Not all bad, right? So focus on the positive. Now, for the week, for the shadow, well, of course, there's that Saturn beginning to move into the square with Jupiter. Definitely something to understand and pay attention to. Um, I'm also, you know, being a little careful with that margin energy so close to the Jupiter because this can be so, um, you know, you know, Mars energy, we can fall into the shadow of Mars very easily. I think that's just human nature. And so it can be a little bit argumentative, a little bit, no, you have to listen to my ideas, all 75 of them. And then of course the Mercury, the Mercury, uh, station, it can always be a little complex when that happens. So just try to keep your communications clear, concise, honest, and kind. All right. Well, I wish you the most marvelous week. Let me know uh, what you're looking forward to this week. Uh, and let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look at the tarot and see what that has to say. Hello, my beautiful friends. We are now in the month of August. So Isis Lotus spread indicating two ways to work with the energies of the week of August the 5th, 2024. Definitely, definitely got to get some traction in the beginning of this month because middle to the end, yeah, probably one of the mo most difficult full moons coming up that I've seen in a long time. So that's on the 19th. So don't overschedule the 19th. But let's take a look at the 5th, the week of the 5th for the collective. Alrighty, my beautiful friends. So where we start out, well, the past has brought us to this point and the past was King of Cups, which makes sense because that was us last week, King of Cups. And you, <laughs> same card we got last week, that card of defeat, Ten of Swords, that feeling of, oh, this is not going according to plan. But sometimes the plan is not smooth. Realize that it's purposeful, whatever's going on. The environment, well, Wheel of Fortune. There's just some karma coming home to roost. Things are unfolding the way they should be. You got to believe it. And as they come together, Eight of Wands, another week of things unfolding very rapidly. 
Key card of the future is the two of swords. You are not seeing something. Maybe you sense it. Maybe you feel it. Maybe you know it, but you're like, yeah, I'm not going to look at that right now because that's scary. It's too much. It's overwhelming. You, your mind is a tool. It can either be your ally or your greatest enemy. And you need to see that that is influencing things right now. Now, two possible um, ways that this energy could unfold. Ten of wands. You realizing that you're taking it all on and you need to actually ask for help or do it easier. Or Queen of Pentacles. Well, this is a very practical approach to things. Now, near future detail card, Ace of Wands. You got to start the new thing. The new thing is coming. Okay. It's on its way. Now on the Ten of Wands side, Ten of Cups. Go towards that which makes you feel abundant, happy, safe, joyful, creative, Absolutely. On the Queen of Pentacles side, watch out for our friend, the devil. He's been very active in the last few weeks spreads. The devil is addiction. The devil is in the details. The devil is um, all the, the more extremes of all the passionate. You know, passion can be wonderful, but not if it rules your life. Anger can be useful, but not if it destroys you. You've got to watch the extremes of the emotions. And then on the Ten of Wands side, we've also got this conflict card again, Five of Wands. So yeah, you know what you want, but maybe there's a conflict with your feeling worthy or maybe the other people in your life are not into it. On the Queen of Pentacles side, here's the World card again, reminding us to have the big picture perspective, to look at the long-term goals here and to remind us that we will be successful. All right, so on the Ten of Wands side, the progression page of swords this was last week's card it was a it was a, a key card last week um and it, you know again maturity is required for these times on the queen of pentacles side the seven of cups don't get overwhelmed with the choices narrow things down better to do few things well than many things half on the ten of wands side paired with the page of swords the six of cups something coming back from the past okay there's something coming back and whether it is something that needs to be processed or managed maybe it's involved with this you know upcoming retrograde cycle or it's just a reminder that you got off track that you know remember how things used to feel when you had what you wanted and let that help guide you with the queen of pentacles seven of cups we have the hanging man again remember Life's delays are not life's denials. So, wow, another super potent week. Remember, we are trying not to delude ourselves, trying not to be blind to reality, all right? We've got to see things clearly and see where to begin again. Now, don't take it all on. It's not all on you, all right? Share the load with coworkers, friends, family, all right? You're not alone. Let that love or passion be the guide and also make sure you get to a place of safety and security and try not to be, you know, conflicted about that. It's okay. Be mature. This is, this is just all about being mature in the pursuit of what you want. On the other side, well, yeah, you're, you're going to have to take care of some financial things, some practical things, and you got to watch out for the things that could trip you up, but it will work out. Try to narrow your focus to a few things well and realize it might take some patience as things culminate. All right, wow. Well, another another super powerful week. Boy, there's, there's no little weeks anymore, are there? All right. All right, well, let's, um, I'll see you next week uh, for the um, August 12th reading and um, rock your week. Bye.